What's up guys, this is uh, Tarek here. Your indoor cycling space can be set up in many different ways. And in this video, I'm going to talk about different products that will give you one heck of a setup on a budget. All the products I'm going to mention in this video are products that I am personally using or use at some point. So I've had a chance to try them all out myself. And to make it easier for you, I'll leave links to all the products I'm going to mention in this video down in the description to make it easier for you to find. And the prices seems to be moving all over the place, so you might even get a better deal on some of these items. I'm going to start off sharing my top budget picks for bike trainers, then I'll move on to devices to run Zwift, and lastly, I will share other accessories that I believe are essential uh, for improving your indoor cycling space. And if you find this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you take a quick second to hit the like button. It helps the video and the channel quite a bit and I really appreciate it. Okay, let's start off with the bike trainer. A good trainer is the most essential part of your pain cave setup. If you do not have a good trainer, it's just going to be a matter of time until you hate indoor cycling. But that doesn't mean you need to spend $1,000 to $1,500 on a trainer. There are many trainers out there with good specs that will give you good road feel as well. So the best budget wheel on bike trainer that I would recommend right now is the Elite Tuo. This trainer has an amazing road feel. It is great for sim riding or erg mode riding. The power accuracy on this trainer is pretty decent too and actually exceeded the plus minus 5% accuracy claims in my testing. The other nice thing about this trainer is its price. It has been selling for around $320. That's over 40% off its retail price. And at this price, this trainer is a steal and I think it looks really good too. The other wheel on trainer that I highly recommend is the Wahoo Kicker Snap. It usually retails for $400, but you might be able to find it right now for $300. The Kicker Snap is very well built and will last you many hours of training. It has one of the best road fields in its class. It is Bluetooth and NT Plus compatible, so it works with Zwift and other cycling apps that supports Bluetooth or NT Plus protocols. But if you have just a little extra money, I would definitely get the Series H3. This is a direct drive trainer, meaning you will need to remove the rear wheel and attach the bike directly onto the trainer. Direct drive trainers tend to be much better at simulating terrain. They tend to be much more powerful and more accurate. The Cirrus H3 is an amazing high-end trainer that is well-built, quiet, gives you good power measurement, extremely heavy 20-pound flywheel that will give you a very good road feel. Also, I found it to measure power within 1-2%, to which is really impressive, and it works so well in erg mode, probably one of the best trainers in erg mode per my testing. The Series H3 has been on clearance for a while now and you can get one for about 360, I mean 300, I mean 630 dollars. I wish it was 300 dollars. The price seems to fluctuate a lot on this trainer and I have seen it go for as low as 480 dollars which is more than half off the suggested retail price. So if you plan on taking your indoor training seriously and looking for a high-end trainer on a budget, I would definitely recommend the H3. And of course, the Zwift Hub is another budget trainer that you can get for about $400. Not as good as the Series H3 from a specs perspective, but definitely worth checking out if you can get your hands on one. Okay, moving on from the trainer, you are going to need a mat to protect your floor and prevent the trainer from slipping. Also, a good mat can dampen the noise from the trainer a little bit. There are plenty of good mats out there on Amazon, this one here by Power Labs costs only $33. It looks like a solid mat for a good price with plenty of satisfied reviews. All right, now you have a trainer and a mat. Now all you need is a device to run Zwift or possibly another app. The good news is you can run Zwift on a lot of devices and most likely you already have a device that you can use to run Zwift and it's probably in your pocket. Zwift is compatible with Mac, Windows, tablets like the iPad, but you can also run it on your iPhone and some Android devices. So the most budget option would be to run it on your phone, but I need to keep this video going guys here and it is just boring to run Zwift on a tiny device like the phone. So let's go big, big screen big. 
The Apple TV 4K, per my experience, is by far one of the best and easiest ways to run Zwift. You just cannot go wrong with the Apple TV 4K. It is an incredible device that will give you a fantastic Zwifting experience. It's small and connects directly to your TV. Zwift runs natively on Apple TV, and what I mean by that is you can download the Zwift app directly onto the Apple TV from the Apple TV App Store, and Zwift will run on the Apple TV directly. I personally use the Apple TV for many years and rarely had issues with it. I recommend getting the latest Apple TV 4K 2022 model. You just need the base model which sells for about $125. You only need the higher version if you have bad Wi-Fi reception in your area and prefer to use an Ethernet port and that is the main difference between the two. But the main reason I would recommend the 2022 model is because it has the A15 Bionic chip. This is a much faster processor and has a much more powerful GPU. Zwift is currently not taking advantage of all that power, but I am hoping Zwift will update its app or Apple TV app to take advantage of the powerful processor the Apple TV 4K has. I'm going to assume that you have an extra TV sitting somewhere in your house that you can use. If not, you can get a decent TV these days for about $200. Okay, moving on from the core setup items, let's get into talking about pan cave accessories that will improve your indoor riding experience. I think having a good fan is essential for indoor training, not only to cool you down, but also to circulate the air in your training room and keep humidity and CO2 levels in check. I personally have two fans, the Wahoo Kicker fan and a standing fan. The kicker fan is not a budget friendly fan, but works very well if you can afford one. It has a powerful targeted airflow and can be programmed to be controlled manually or by your speed, power, or my favorite, heart rate. So depending on how you have it programmed, as you work out and your heart rate or power increase, the fan speed increase as well. But you can also find a lot of good other cheap fans on Amazon, Lasco fans are good and provide good amount of air and not expensive at all. I had this Lasco fan for many years and it is only $50 on Amazon. I do recommend getting a remote controlled one so you can adjust the speed without getting off the bike. This Amazon Basics one seemed like a good option and it is only about $20 more than the Lasco fan. Next, you'll find having some kind of a table to keep your phone, laptop, snack, water bottles, or whatever is needed. Uh, the one I have here is the KOM Media Display. It is about $100 and I love the minimal design. It has an anti-slip surface so you can place your laptop or in my case, an infinite amount of bike computers on top. It holds two water bottles and has a slot that can hold your phone or iPad upright. It is lightweight, portable, and easy to adjust. Now, if you happen to be a runner as well and have a treadmill that you want to use with Zwift, you can get this little treadmill built sensor that connects to Zwift. This sensor is by North Pole Engineering and retails for $100. Basically, you have stickers that you place on the treadmill belt, or in my case, I use Whiteout to paint these lines on it. The run sensor sits on the side of the belt and measures the treadmill speed by measuring how fast these stickers or whiteout goes by. Then it broadcasts this belt speed to Zwift. Very simple and super easy to set up, much easier than a foot pod that needs charging and has to sit on your shoe. So with that, you now have a full and fancy indoor training setup for a really great price. Assuming you got the kicker snap for $300, the cycling mat for $33 and the Apple TV for $125 and uh, what else? The, the fan for $50 and the KOM Media Display for $100. This setup will cost you $608. Not bad, right? Now, if you decide to go with the Series H3, which will give you a much better trainer, for $630 instead of getting a wheel on trainer, your setup will come to about 600 i mean 938 dollars and if you are a runner and have a treadmill and want to add the run sensor now you'll be sitting at 1038 dollars if i did my math right that's still much cheaper than many of the high-end trainers out there like the kicker or garmin tax neo and with these recommendations you will still have a quality setup that works well for a pleasurable pain cave 
experience. Now, if you do not have uh, a TV that you can use with the Apple TV, you can get one of these Vizio 32 inch TVs for about 170 bucks. And now you have a full dedicated room set up for training with a TV for about $1,108, which is not bad at all, right? You can probably even do better with some of the deals that are going around right now. All right, like I said, I'll have links to everything I talked about in this video down in the description. And I would love to also hear from you and your thoughts as well about the setup and how you would change it or if you have something else you would recommend. Okay, I hope you find this video helpful. Remember to hit that like button. And if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video.